Hey beauties and cuties, welcome to Power Talk Ends and you already know I'm your girl Sheena Lynn Hanson. Here is Holy. Not only that, here is where you get your daily motivation, inspiration and empowerment. You can always depend on this channel to give you a word of encouragement. I want to say I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you for liking, sharing and subscribing. I pray that the Lord will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't be able to contain. Don't move a muscle. We'll be right back. We are rise and I take over territory. We are break some curses lyrically. We are shake some kingdom literally. Now nah, show Satan no sympathy. Young people make we grow spiritually. Stop war with the neighbor physically. Draw for the Holy Bible daily. Humble a God feet like baby. Tired for see family in a cemetery. Youths them need guidance mentally. Stop abuse young girls sexually. We need Yeshua in a the industry. See it on a try rally while you're destiny Young girl, keep your identity Hey babies, greetings, greetings, greetings in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I'm always so happy to be here with you, to share the word with you, to interact with you and to deposit in you. I'm absolutely so grateful that the Lord will use a vessel such as mine to impact lives in such a big way. God bless you and you already know the protocols. Go to the comment section and give God a mighty praise. There's so much to be thankful for. God is bigger than your problems, bigger than your attacks, bigger than your shitness, bigger than darkness. God is big. So go to the comment section and put a mighty, mighty praise in there. Hallelujah to God be the glory. Great things he has done. He is still the king of kings. He's still the Lord of lords. He is still the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. He is our rock of ages and ancients of days. He is Adonai and El Shaddai. God with us, Emmanuel. We give him all the glory. Come on, people of God, put a praise in the comment section. Now, today's topic will be stay sober. Stay sober, stay sober, stay sober. Hallelujah. And I want you to understand that when you're anointed, it comes with responsibilities. When you're anointed, you are to be responsible. And that's why my topic today is stay sober. We will be connecting from the book of Esther chapter 4. We will go from 9 to, to 12. But our main verses will be 13 and 14. So I want you to just open the channels of your spirit to receive what the Lord is saying through me today hallelujah now when you're anointed people of god you have responsibilities many times people say oh you know god anoint me i mean no i'm called to do something but what god i'm going to do something and god come to do some what did he call you to do because many times also we are anointing and we think no that's the time for us to sit down and wear our pretty dress and our tall heels and our broad hats to church and just sit down because i'm anointed but when you're anointed you have a responsibility when you're anointed you are now responsible that's why we go through the training and the process because we are anointed to work we are not anointed to be in pride we are not anointed for persons to say oh you see that woman i got there she's so anointed you see the man of god there she's so anointed but what are you doing with your anointing everyone that i know that god have anointed when i read the bible they had a responsibility i want you to understand it this you cannot sit down with your anointing self saying oh i'm anointed but not taking up your responsibilities i want you to understand that you are called to call other people there's something god deposit in you to do something for somebody as you are blessed to be a blessing your anointing is not for yourself so don't sit down in your seat and say i'm so anointed and i up there no that's it that is not it when you're anointing you have responsibilities and when you are, when you are anointed you are responsible now let me look at the life and the characters of king asherus vashti and esther we are going to look at mordecai and the whole scene with esther and so forth but we are just going to start here Anybody read the book of Esther? Because the book of Esther have a boss. I love the book of Esther. But don't overlook the fact that King Asherus was a party animal. Mm -hmm. That man loved to throw parties. He never did a waste no time. No time the boy never waste 
God forgive me. No time the king no waste. The man keep party, 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 party. But King Asherus was king. No, King Asherus queen at the time was Vashti. Now, when we talk about stay sober, King Asherus invited all the people, all the tapanaris, all of the dandem, all of the big top man, them, all of the King Asherus draw out everybody. I want big party. Now, Vashti had the opportunity to keep a little get together herself where she would call over the girls. So the big top and Harris wives was having a party with Vashti back there while Asherus was having the party with the, the other big top and Harris people them. Yeah, you can make you can understand it right now. So Asherus are keeping party. Mark you, he had the crown. He was a king, but he's drinking wine. How many of us drinking wine? I'm not going to even lie to you. Like, I love red wine. And if you knew anything about me, if you listen to my story, you know that I was a drinker, I was a smoker. I love to be high. But let me tell you something. <laughs> There's one thing that makes you so high up there. No weed, no drugs, no 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 can make your eye like old and 19 make your eye. No weed, no, no, no weed, no drugs can make your eye like when the presence of God sit up on you. When the presence of God sit up on you, you feel like you're out of this world, you feel like your eye, 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 you never get an eye from my ecstasy or jokes like when the Holy Spirit sit down for him. When the Holy Spirit sit down for you, you turn fool. You don't need, you don't need wine for be drunk, baby. Get drunk under the Holy Spirit. Hey, my bishop, sometimes when I preach and when the Holy Spirit come down, man, I'm all a stagger and a preach. I mean, I say, yeah, God, drunk under the Holy Ghost. Because of them, look at the thing they be like, you know, drunk under the Holy Spirit. Sometimes me I pray, man, I when me I pray and the Holy Spirit come down so strong, me don't know what to do, me don't know what to turn, me just a rock two side, rock two. Rock no, walk a stagger. Walk two times, two times, three times. Walk a stagger no. Me I tell you when Holy Spirit come down, me I tell you, no drunken, hey, no drunken man can wallow when Holy Spirit sit down power. Me I tell you, Holy Spirit nice, presence of God nice. God presence is like heaven. That's why we encourage people every day get an encounter. I when I tell me they in a room a prayer, me I say. I don't know what happened, but something come down every part of me. I said, I just, I said, I just a shake like a leaf. And I said, Jesus, come. I know the presence of God come. And I just a shake like a leaf. Like, I'm light, like a feather. Like, I know God, I do something. God was definitely doing something in my body at that particular time because the presence come down so strong. I couldn't come out tight. I couldn't move. I couldn't shake. I just have an it just a shake. So, staggering under the Holy Spirit. Now, King Asherus, you know, party, I drink all of the wine, them, the any see the muscat so the more it open up what a new one they name me then we call a long time in a good dance but in drunk under fame wine my love mark you he was king now the king have an responsibility now while he was drunken what i understand from the book of esther is that he called his wife queen vashti to come and strip herself and show to his guests now, when you're a responsible man, a king, a responsible king, not supposed to do that, but he was drunk. He wasn't so sober. And that's why we said to you, when you're anointed, you have to stay sober. When you're anointed, you are not responsible. If you know, say, if you drink three glasses of wine, it's going to make your head lighter, make you start stuck. Drink half glass because now you're responsible. You have people to lead. You have people looking up to you. You cannot do everything that everybody's doing when you are responsible for something or responsible for a flock or responsible. When you're anointed, you are responsible. No, this man was not sober. This man was drunken. Drunken. Called his wife to strip herself to show to the guests. And when the wife saw that it was even do it were good for Esther, but we're not talking about it in that way today. We are talking about how oh, is irresponsible with his irresponsible self called his queen to come and strip herself before the the, the other men and Vashti was like oh no 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 I'm not gonna do that no 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 I'm not gonna do that so right there and then because of that and because of the of of of, of because of who he was 
and because of his pride, because probably he could have make it slide, you know, because we used to watch to be really pretty, you know. Probably he could have make it slide, probably he could have make it go on. But when the man them say, no, no, you know, your wife disrespect you. Next thing she gonna make our wife feel like so she can disrespect we. And normally in that time when they make a degree, degree decree, it you cannot reverse it. So you know the man them in him ears are telling him say you're a king and she's supposed to obey if she come and say if if you call her and say do this she's supposed to do that and that and the man them in him ears. But him think about it long and hard you know because Ash um Asheros are uh, better yet Vashti Vashti was beautiful as the, the word said and 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 I'm queen. It's like when him get sober him starting but I say what me do now we make a degree when in the junk. Some of we are make some plans and make some decisions when we not sober. And I'm saying to you in this season, sober up. You have responsibilities and God anoint responsible people. It's not time to be joking and drinking wine. See, I love wine, you know. And what day I was drinking a lot of wine and I tell my bishop, I say, Bishop, I don't know what I'm going you know, but boy, every time I touch the supermarket, I have to buy a bottle of red wine because I love it. And Bishop charged me to put away my wine. Put away my wine. I can't even drink a half glass because you charge me to put away the wine. And if you know me, love a red wine. I love a wine. I love wine, dry wine. I just love it. But my tell bishop says like, me need it for sleep. Me need it for this. Me need it for that. Me just feel like I always want to drink a glass of wine and cut me ten, drink a little glass of wine and read or drink a little. I'm just telling Bishop about it because, you know, we can't be drunken. I wasn't drinking until I'm drunken, but I realized it was something I keep going for, going for, and it keep doing something to me. It kind of make me feel a little vibe. Say, it's like me not drunk, but me under vibes. So, because I saw where I was going, I said it to my Bishop and my Bishop told me and charged me to put away my wine. So I do that and sometimes I want a little glass, but I realize that if me start, I realize that I like, will overdo it. So I leave it alone until I'm responsible enough if I can drink a half glass and feel better. And not because I have the bottle, I'm going to just a drink, a drink, a drink, a drink, a drink, a drink, a drink. And people, you know, say me transparent. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you everything. So my bishop charge me to put away my wine. So I put away my wine. Glory to God. So we want to go into this verse now. Because we want to talk about Queen Esther. Now, verse to move out of the way we know. And Esther is now queen. When we look at chapter 4, I'm going to read verses 9 to... We are going to read verses 9 to 12. Now, Esther is the queen. And we have a little trouble man in our system. Amen. How much we have some amen in our life? Yeah, man, some A man, we are plan to build some jealous so with some A man, we are go to a destiny help and them and turn their mind away from with some A man, we are tell people lie with some A man we want to get through that we are hey, somehow we have some A man. So A man we know what plan up and a plan up now for wipe out all of the Jews. No, where may I get to is the part of being anointed with responsibilities. Now Esther is queen. Hallelujah. Let us read from verses 9 to 12. Because we are getting to the serious part. Now verse 9 to 12 says, An attack came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spoke unto attack and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king, unto the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such whom the king shall hold out the golden scripture, that he may live, but have not been, but I have not been called to come into the king, come to the king. 30 days now, and they told Mordecai Esther's word. That is Esther 4, verses 9 to 12. Now, Miss Esther, Mordecai, catch a prey and see what I am and up to. Mark your Esther said in the word, so she have not seen the king for 30 days. Little did she know that Amon had the king's attention 
king's attention because of the plot that he was setting up. Hallelujah. Ah, mighty God. Mark you, Esther was a Jew. Hallelujah. So we want you to read all of the book. I understand what is going on here. Now, Esther, make mark you, she a queen. She a live comfortably in a nice big house and what, what a few, what a few. Now, when Mordecai strip him clothes and I go around and, I, and I go on with him things, because him decides that this him see what I go on and it can't happen. The Jews, them can't go dead out there, you know. Mordecai, it reach Esther is. Now, Esther, I make an excuse. Me, how much we love make excuse? We have a mission, but but we are make excuse. God said we go do something, but we are procrastinating. God tell me to do this, but as excuse, excuse, excuse. Now Esther came, send with with with, with the, the men an excuse to Mordecai. Why the king not call me for 30 days? You know, say nobody can go to the king if the king not send for them. Because if the king, if you go to the king and the king not send for you, you can be put to death if him not put out the golden scripture and all kind of excuses. So summer we stay. Once we have the anointed, we can pray for people. Why not pray right now? Me not in my mindset. Me not in my rightful mind. Be things that happen to me. Me depressed. Uh, be your excuse somehow we have. Be your excuse. We are 90 to sing and uh, oh, every every Sunday we upset fan church. You know something my vice not too are uh, something uh, my, my family and my this always have an excuse. Put away your excuses. Put away your excuses. Because when God anoints you, you are not you know of responsibilities. God not anoint you for your sit in your seat and look pretty. God not anoint you for your come and put on your pretty clothes and act like say no no powers of hell can touch you and nothing can happen. God not anoint you for your dust just that that for just stop it right there god moves from glory to glory and from grace to grace so when you're anointed you have responsibilities many of us god is telling us what to do we see where i'm roll. we know if we gather some people and pray things can happen because you get the anointing of praying we know if we gather some th people and worship this so things can happen because we have the anointing of worshiping we have the anointing of so many things but somehow when we have the anointing we lock it away and continue and tell people boy we know god anoint me to do this now but what are you doing what are you doing hallelujah ensure that you are taking up your responsibilities you're not anointed for look cute i'm wanting to understand this there is always a replacement vashti was replaced by esther and if esther feel like she never did want uh, the jews she could have been replaced because when god have a work in the place you don't want to do it he will move on so you can sit down with your anointing and say, boy, I'm no anointed for this, but there's no more but. Go and take up your responsibilities, the responsibilities that God has given to you. No much time me tired. I may have to go up on the next program, to our next program. I may have to wake up in the night and read my Bible. Go on my bed at 1, 12 o'clock after I'm done praying. And I have to wake up 5.30 for mother read my bishop program. And I have to do this and I have to do that because what you have responsibilities when you're anointing. Somebody's waiting for a word from you. Somebody's crying out for the light. The the light, the little light that you have to shine. When you are anointing, you have responsibilities. Hallelujah. No, remember me tell you this. Your replacement is always there. You are 19 and you now use what you get. Somebody I pray, God use me. God use me as you mess up yourself. And as you play stubborn. And as you sit down and now and move. God raise up somebody else. Then you know what you do? You get bad mind and jealous. I, 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 envious and covetous. Because you sit down on the anointing and God raise up somebody else. Do what you never want to do. For the way you was procrastinating about well, that for, for procrastinating about for the way you where you put man delay. There is always somebody out there, God, that wants to be used by God, that's availing themselves to be used by God. So you don't sit down with your anointing, God, I tell you for do this and do that, and you wait till you can't bother, you this or you that, you tell and this and that, I'm deeper. you know how much time me, you know how much time me then in my house, I cry out my soul, and somebody come for prayer, and I have to wipe off my face and start prayer. You know how much time I preach a sermon all what day, and I go to a situation, I'm going to tell you up on a story time, I go to a situation, and, and 
and and I may tell you something. Hurt my heart, break my heart, break my heart, break my heart, break because of the situation when I got through with with a certain business when we did not take care of. Let me tell you something. Me have to dry up my tears and go preach and go preach the next morning. I preach again and preach again. So when you no matter where you are go through, when you have a charge, when you have a responsibility, when you are night, you have to do what God say. If when you're done, you want to go cry or do it, just do that because honestly, I don't need you. But me ensure say if me get an assignment, it is complete. You know, most time I'm all in my bed and I get up. But me have assignment, me have responsibilities, me have some people. We are waiting for your word. You think that every time I want to come in front of one camera, no, this is my assignment. Me, this is my responsibility. Me have some people we are depend upon me for your word from God. And God is using me to give them that word. So no matter how you feel depression, no much time me feel lower. You know how much time I pour out and I don't have nobody to pour back out into me. I just have to go back in and I pray and my Bible and I met God and um, um, pour back into me. But what? I have a responsibility. So you're anointed enough for you to sit down and look cute. And if you just walk I'm anointed and I put on your eye ears and say, I am minister so and so and prophetess so and so and apostle so and so. No, what are you doing? What are you doing? The anointing comes with responsibilities. So if you anointed and not doing nothing and nobody now save and nothing now go on, um, me have to cheat. Who anoint you? Because when God anoint you, look for David, look for Moses, look for all of the patriarchs, them anointed to do something. They have responsibilities. Hallelujah. And, and, and I want you to, uh, let me go to, we're going to go to verse 13 and 14 as we are coming to a close. Verse 13 and 14, and this is Esther chapter 4, it says, Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with yourself that you shall escape the king's house more than all the Jews. For you altogether hold, for if you altogether hold your peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. You hear what me just tell you, say, and your house shall, but you and your father's house shall be destroyed, whether or, whether you are and who knows whether you are come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Many of us are called for such a time as this. I just said it a while ago, and this was what was in the word. If you sit down and think, say, because you, Esther, this is what Marika said, Esther, sit down in her king's house and think, say, when them are destroyed, the, the Jews, then you now go get destroyed. Remember, you are Jew too. So sit down in your comfort zone. Sit down in your big queen size or king size bed. Sit down in your big coach and think, say, when them a kill out the Jews, them not going to kill you too. Eh? Oh, no. Oh, oh, you no know, no say, God put you here so for a time as this zebra to scatter of Oh, you no know, no way I look for me, say, God call you for your time like this. But you sit down in your comfort zone. You sit down no one do where God tell you to do. You you better arise because if you're not arise, gonna go raise up somebody else. If you're not get up and do what you do, there is always somebody else praying, God use me and God will use them. So you're not sitting in your seat and feel like say, Oh, and I want to make you understand being anointed when you're anointed. You're not excused from attacks. You're not excused from what the devil is doing and his devices and his plots. Why you think Christian God to and have to keep praying and have to keep worshiping and have to keep doing what they have to do? You are not excused. You're not excused from the plans of the enemy. The word of God said, no weapon that fashion, no weapon fashion or form against you will be able to prosper. It never said the weapons nah go farm. It said no weapon fashion or form against you. That means them will farm, but them now go prosper. We're going to sit down. What are you going to do? Sit down. You are not excused from problems, issues, and all these things where the enemy come with when you are anointed. When you are anointed, you probably go through these things more. You don't want a testimony. You don't want something under your belt. You have to go through something to tell somebody, say, yeah, I'm going to go through this. I'm pass through this, but I'm overcome victorious through this. God help me through this. What you think God want you to do? Just know, say, you get saved and that's it. God want you to show the people that he's powerful and he can do mighty things through you, in you, and around you. So don't 
Now sit down in your seat and look for you and look for other people and do the thing. Get up and do something because if you don't want to do it, God is going to raise up somebody else that is willing and available. So nobody feel like say, oh, me can't sing the best. God, while my singer did their prayer, I say, God, listen, use me. I want to sing. You know what I think is true? You can't do this and do that. One next person can't do this and do that. Did their prayer, God, me can't do this and do that. Mo use me. So nobody feel like God, 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 because you are anointed and that's it. That's it. When you're anointed, you have responsibility. When you're anointed, hallelujah, you are responsible for a certain things. There is always someone to take your place if you don't want to take up your responsibilities. People of God, I encourage you this day. Get up. Start with something. Go into your community. Gather some people and pray. Gather some people and go worship. Get up. Do something. When you're anointed, you have a responsibility. When you're saved, go out and make sure somebody else gets saved. Go make disciples of other people. Tell people about the goodness of God. If a singer can't sing, go into the supermarket, go sing. If a, if a uh, evangelizer can evangelize, go up on the bus, go evangelize. Whatever you are, whatever you think God has called you to do, get up and do it because there's always somebody ready to take your place. God is not going to wait till you feel a mind to be obedient. Do what you have to do and do it now. I pray your strength. I pray that, oh, shatter in the name of Jesus. I, if I be a woman of God, I pray that right now and understand the sound of my voice. Your soul be reignited for work, reignited for purpose, reignited for your responsibilities. Go out, live a transformed life and transform somebody else. God bless you. She not power talk. Hey Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today. You can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1-876-429-6004. Listen Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now, Crown and the Cross.